Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this latest edition of Cross Exam. Joining us today, we have senior men's student athlete, Tim Siegfried, who is a business administration major with a minor in marketing, and we have athletic facilities custodian, Terry Leahy, here to do the interview. Terry, take it away. Thanks, Danny. Hey, Tim, how are you? Good, how are you, Terry? Great, hey, thanks for participating. Um, my family and I have gotten to know you a little bit, and um, including my son, who's a freshman in high school, a soccer player, really looks up to you and has uh, really benefited from your counsel and, and uh, your mentorship. So I really appreciate you on that level as well. Um, so I first was introduced to you by my coworker, Adonis, and um, he said, here comes Tim, he's from Germany, he's a really nice guy. Uh, he likes to speak Spanish to me. So uh, how is your Spanish, Tim? And how many uh, languages besides English and German do you speak? Um, my Spanish is not really good. So all I do is just talk to him a little bit. Every now and then when I see him on campus, I would ask him a question. Hey, like, what does this mean in Spanish? Or this mean, like, let me talk to you a little bit more. Like, uh, at the end of the year, I want to talk to you in Spanish a little more, you know? So um, I would just like joke around with him. Um, my Spanish is not really there, to be honest. Like, we're just like, hey, how are you? How's your day going? You know? Um, and besides English, it's just German. So English and German, and that's pretty much it. Oh, that's great. I admire <laughs> that, uh, that you make that effort. And um, I think that's great. So you grew up in a small town in Germany near Stuttgart. And uh, can you tell us about your hometown and your family? I think your mom and dad are still there and you have a sister, an older sister? or? Yeah, exactly. So I grew up uh, in a town called Osterburgen. And there's like probably like four to 5,000 people living there. So it's really tiny. Like I'm really from the countryside. Um, the next bigger city would be Stuttgart um, or Frankfurt. Um, they're both about an hour away. Uh, Stuttgart a little less than an hour um and uh yeah I have an older an older sister she is working for a bigger company back home um and she's working in the HR department um and then my mom um she works as a cashier uh, for like a supermarket back home and my dad is working construction actually so super middle class working family um but yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very cool um, in a small village like that. Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> nice. um, but I got out of it actually pretty early. Um, I left at the age of, of 13 to pursue my, my dream. Yeah. Yes. So that's really my next question. Um, so playing youth soccer in Germany is quite different from youth soccer in the United States. And so tell us a little bit about the differences between, you know, kind of academy level soccer in Europe and versus here. Well, back home, first of all, we don't really have the, the school and sports. Um, so they're not connected. We basically grow up in an environment that has club sports separately from school. Um, so all you would do in school is you have like PE or something, you know, um, but there's not much like competition um, with the school. Um, it's all based in the club. Um, so for me personally, it was like playing for like my hometown club, basically. You cover all ages. They start at year like three, I think I started. Um, and then you have it all the way up to like the seniors, you know? Um, and that's for each, each little club in Germany. That's not just for the big clubs. That's like all over Germany. So I'm not sure how many clubs there are, but it, it's got to be up in the higher thousands. Um, and then you just work your way up. Um, the better you get, the, the, the quicker you get to other clubs, you transfer, um, you get noticed by other clubs. So for me, it was like, I think I was nine or 10 when I transferred my first time. Um, my dad actually, he drove me there um, like three times a week. It was like 20, 30 miles away from home. Um, and we would go there like three or four times a week, uh, plus a game on the weekends. And then I took that step and I did really well there for this bigger club. And then um, this big academy approached me and they're like, hey, like, 
don't you want to come and like play for us? Um, and then I transferred there, which is actually like uh, the youth academy of Stuttgart. Hmm. Um, and then I, my dad actually commuted there with me at the age of 13 or 12, 12 and 13. And then I stayed there for two years and then I left for another youth academy because there was like things going on. Like it's very political in those kind of environments. Like it's very hard competition. The boys are very, very good. It's, it's like shoulders out mentality. Like you got to fight your way through. Everybody wants to become a pro there. Um, you have 24 kids basically on the roster um they're all fighting for a spot and you're like 12 13 years old um and and that's how it works and then from from there on i just played for several youth academies and played for the played in the highest leagues back home in germany like the youth leagues and the bundesliga um and yeah then my last my last step was coming to the u.s <clears throat> so on that, on the youth uh, side of things, some kids actually move to towns far from their homes to to be on these club teams and and compete. Right? It's it's very common. Um, they pull out kids from like I would say age ten to like thirteen already. They move their parents. They offer the parents jobs at the club, so the kid feels comfortable moving, right? Because obviously, mm -hmm. for a parent. Uh, it's tough to let go a kid of age 12 or 13. I mean, that's just, it sounds ridiculous to most parents here I talk to. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's very different. It's very, I guess they're like profit driven and like each kid, they see something in him. And if he's going to make the big step, they want to be part of. So mm. everybody's, everybody's looking for that, that big guy, that, that one yeah. kid that could change the club, you know, and like, that that's maybe one thing that's not so different from uh, club sports, youth sports here in the United States. <laughs> but uh, so great, thanks. Uh, so describe the pathway then from there to Point Loma and Nazarene University. So I was living close to Munich my last three years um, when I was in Germany. That was age sixteen to like nineteen, I think. Um, I finished my my high school there. Um, which was really tough in the state of Bavaria, like school systems, the, like they're so different from state to state back home. So I had to adjust once I moved from my state to like the state of Bavaria. Um, and that took me a little bit longer to like adjust. Um, that's why I finished my, my high school degree, I think uh, half a year later. Um, and then from there, um, I was playing for a youth academy uh, called Ingolstadt. Um, and in my last year, like I had some like personal stuff going on and didn't do so well, you know? Um, and the question was whether they give me a contract for like the, the amateurs. Um, and so I was talking to them and it didn't really work out for both sides of us. And at some point I was really like sick of the environment of, of soccer back home because it was just so, so competitive and like so much pressure and, um like moving out so young and it all kind of like didn't really work out for me so um the, there was a guy uh, approaching me during one of the games and he's like hey like what are your plans for next year like um i'm like working for this this agency like we're looking to like transfer players to the united states so you can play soccer there and finish your degree um and at first i was like oh no like that doesn't make sense like um, I still want to somehow like pursue my career here, but um, at the time um, I I wanted to stick around for one more year uh, where I was um, for personal um, reasons. And then after that year, I was like, okay, I feel like it, it's time to move on now. And then I, I called the guy that approached me a year previous and I was like, hey, like, what, what were you saying about America? Like, what's all about that? <laughs> and he basically connected me to Point Loma because he knew the assistant coach at the time. And uh, that's how I, I got into Point Loma, basically. And as soon as I heard San Diego, I, I, I was fascinated. And I just wanted to take on that adventure. Wow. So did you actually travel here to visit first and check Never. out the campus? No. So you just made the leap. And... Uh, we're not disappointed. <laughs> yeah. 
it was funny. I, I visited a friend that I played with at, at the academy back home. Um, he's Canadian. So they transferred him to Germany um, when we were, he was 17, so 16. And I played with him for, for a year or two. And he actually transferred back to, to the United States and he got a scholarship at UCSB. And uh, I visited him for three weeks. And while I was up there, um, the guy that wanted to transfer me to Point Loma, he was like, hey, like, why don't you come down like to San Diego? Um, but for some reason, it just didn't really work out. Um, I didn't really get to go from the school and I was kind of like stuck up there. didn't know how to get down there. Um, so I, I flew back, um, um, actually hoping to like play for UCSB, <laughs> but later on the NCAA didn't allow me to play division one. So that's why I transferred division two. Okay. Well, okay. So having transferred or, or made the move here, uh, what would you describe as your most profound experience here, uh, whether it's sports related, academically, spiritually, socially, what stands out to you um, in this experience uh, over the last four years? Um, that's, wow, that's a very deep, huh? good, yeah, deep, <laughs> deep and broad question. Um, I would say, I would say social and cultural experience for sure just mm -hmm. adjusting to a new country was very different i mean i i have been moving around for for a while now and taking that next step was like so different just from moving out from home or like moving states or like um it was it there was for sure a cultural shock in the beginning you know where you're like oh my god like everything is so different and like different language uh, food and like um, logistics like infrastructure everything is like you're like oh my god but then over time you like adjust you like you 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 learn a lot I feel like um, and that's what's like sticking with me now like just the whole experience making new friends like um, I mean we did so so many different things like with the team we traveled to Hawaii and we like rented those like scooters we drove around the island we went to like different national parks with with friends of mine we like did hikes you know um all that kind of stuff like just seeing how people live here um i would say and then obviously like the friends that i gained here um for sure is something that will always always be with me here um so yeah nice. well um so in your bio online you you uh, list kobe as being one of your favorite athletes. What most impressed you about Kobe? Um, yeah, I, I'm all about those, those guys, you know, just watching YouTube videos and see how they, they work, work out their, their philosophy about sports and like in terms of work ethics and stuff. Um, I mean, obviously there's much known about him and how he, he had handled everything. Um, but just the way he like, approached his profession i think is is very like admirable um because for him um everything was so like special and the way he like prepared himself for that profession was just very very like that's how you wanted to be kind of but like only a few get there you know and like um in i read a couple of his books and like his like um mental coach and like um all those guys they were just like so impressed by the way he worked like waking up at four uh working out in the morning before everybody starts their days and like um going back to a workout at 11 and then <laughs> it's just like so like that's that's professional i think and and that's why he deserves um whatever he like accomplished you know um yeah so it's it's basically just about his work ethics and and how he approached the game of, of basketball. Sure. But um, as a soccer player, we we just transfer that to soccer, obviously. Um, but yeah, sure. So on the soccer field, I hear your teammates referring to you as Tebow. So explain that. Yeah, which is really um, confusing because back home, Timo is a different name. So you would spell oh. that T I M O, um, which is a completely different name uh, okay i thought it was Tebow, but they're it, saying Timo. 
Exactly. But here in the States, I think it's TMO. So they're okay. like, we have another guy on the team. His name is Jacob and they would say Jamal. So they would just be like J-M-O, I think. Okay. And then for me, it would be T-M-O. So I, I think it's just because it goes off the tongue a little bit smoother than Tim. Um, I'm not sure who came up with that, to be honest. But like, I try to stop it. Um, but then if, if, there, if there's 24 guys on the team, then yeah, like you said, good luck. <laughs> sure. So speaking of that, who on the team, either this year or last year, would you say is the biggest influencer? biggest influencer that wow. strong personality that leadership um the humor what you know who is it out there on the on the pitch every day that just seems to kind of command that attention and there was so my my freshman year and my my sophomore year um i remember me coming in um not knowing what i was getting myself into um and uh, from the very first day, there was a guy, um, his name is Matias Rodriguez. He's the brother of Pascal Rodriguez, who's currently on the team. And uh, I was really impressed by the way he, like, tried to be a leader and, like, step into that role. Um, we're still, like, best friends or, like, best buddies, I would say. Um, so, um, yeah, we kind of, like, we're, like, very aggressive on the field and, like, very, like, competitive, I would say. So, mm um he probably more on the physical aspect for me more about the 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 skills aspect and like just scoring and assisting but um i i really looked up to him and i still do um and he was also one of the captains um but he was very influential for the whole team um mm -hmm. starting off that year really successful so he was a big part of that so on that note you went from striker last year to midfield this year Tell us about that transition. Well, um, I I always played the <clears throat> sorry uh, I always played the the ten the center attacking midfield, um, and uh, coming in my freshman year I played it the whole year and then sophomore year I think we did a change mid season um, where where I like scored a lot off the ten position and our striker didn't. So that's where we made that switch and it worked out perfectly because that season I went on to like score 16 goals or so um, for one season. And my junior year, I think coach stuck with it because um, we were like short on players um, for forwards. And uh, this year he wanted me to kind of like go back again to like lead the team more because you're not always in the game as a nine. You're more... You, you might be the standout player because you're scoring, um, but that doesn't mean you're in the game all the time. So you're not really engaged. You're not really like as influential as if you're like dropping back one position. So sure, um, sure. that's why he wanted me back there, I think. Well, so on that note, congratulations on all conferences this year. It's Thank you. <laughs> that move didn't hurt you any. Um, yeah. So that's great. Um, so I'm going to, Pivot for a second to, to rapid fire. So I'm just gonna one after another ask you some quick questions. There's no time for contemplation or spin. You just have to answer honestly. But you can okay. go off the board if you have some some answer other than the options that I give. You. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, roller coaster or skydiving? Roller coaster. Hmm, okay. Uh, sushi or bratwurst? Brought it worse. <laughs> okay. Mercedes or BMW? BMW. I know you drive a Volkswagen. I thought you might be off the board on that one. Okay. <laughs> um, Adidas, Puma, or Nike? I wear a lot of Nike, um, so I can't. Uh, I would feel guilty if I say Adidas, but Adidas. I do love. I do love Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, we say we say Adidas. Sorry. Right. Right. Okay. Just yeah, to speak the um, language there, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I would say Nike though, because I wear a lot more Nike. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Hulk or Black Panther? Um, Black Panther. Okay. Skiing or snowboarding? Skiing. Of course. Uh, Black Forest or Joshua Tree? Ooh, 
I've never been to Josh Retreat. <laughs> so I thought you had. I, got, I thought one I, of your trips had been. I got to uh, fess up. No, um, <laughs> unfortunately not. Um, so I got to go with Black Forest. <laughs> okay, uh, let me pivot. Uh, Black Forest or uh, Yosemite? You went to Yosemite, right? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. For sure, Yosemite. Wow, okay. All right. Um, last one, Wagner or Common? Um, uh, common. Okay, it took a minute though. All yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> All right, a couple more questions, um, more on a marketing focus. Um, as a marketing major, what do you see as Point Loma Nazarene University's unique selling proposition? So unique selling proposition, a marketing term that uh, identifies a brand's key uh, differentiable competitive advantage. So having had some experience over your last four years, um, how would you define it or, ex or identify it in like a marketing plan? Um, well, what's very unique about Point Loma is that it's so small. So all of the classes I, I took were like, I mean, there's like 20, 30 people in there. Um, the marketing professors that I had, um, they were like very clear about the strategy and um, how to like differentiate themselves from others. Um, especially now I'm, I'm taking a lot of classes that talk about um, how to like sell a product or like how to come up with a, a strategic plan. Um, we actually had like uh, in this last class, we just have like guest speakers a lot. So I, I appreciate that about Point Loma, um, letting people uh, in from the outside to like um, show real world experience. Um, we, we did, for example, like coming up with a product and then or a service um, and then sell that basically to a client um, in a class. That was a whole project. Um, so like just those hands on types of types of experiences. What um, was your product or service? So uh, our service was um, to, to create an app or like an online platform um, to, uh, to put um, talents on the platform, basically to show coaches exactly, to, to show the coach's need of a player and then to like fit those needs with the perfect player. Mm -hmm. Because as a coach, you don't always know what you're, what you're getting, especially like from overseas. So we kind of like created this unique platform where you're completely exposed to like every, every coach in the U S um, and they get exactly what they need. So, and that's like another thing as a marketer, I feel like that's, that's the biggest thing you need to know what your target group wants and what they need. Once you figure that out, um, I feel like um, it's, it's a smooth transition, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so you started an internship recently. I think Brian Thornton in the marketing in the athletics department connected you with a sports management group or yeah, how's he, that going? Um, I did start it, um, but then I, I switched actually. Um, and that's, that's starting in a week. So okay. I, 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 I found a, an internship, but it was very remotely and it was not really like engaging, I would say. It was mm -hmm. basically like, it felt like I was doing just another class because you picked up assignments and then you like submitted it. And I didn't really like that um, because we had that in college already. So I'm looking more for like a hands-on type of, type of work. Um, and I found that actually um, with a e-bike company in San Diego. Oh, um, they're, nice. called, they're called Flex. Um, and I, I'll be starting there on, on the 19th. Oh, nice. Great. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Um, so as a senior, do you have plans or ideas as to a potential career pathway um, or, or dream job? Um, I do. Um, so for me, like plans just changed a little bit because uh, I picked up an injury, um, which, which is unfortunate, but I just got to deal with it. And then so I probably won't be able to play because I was originally um, trying to play another season for fall. Um, so that's kind of like not my plan anymore since I picked up that injury. So I'm trying to like apply for jobs in the moment um, to work for a year to gain experience um, and get my degree already uh, in the spring. So I'm trying to graduate and then find a job right after um, 
whether that be in marketing or in some other type of business. I'm not really set on that because I mean, I, I haven't really like made any steps in the real business world. So I'm just trying to figure out where I fit in, I think. Um, so that one year hopefully gives me a better um, experience just in general, like to figure out what, what, what's, what's the best fit for me. Sure, well, that makes sense. Um, final question. This one's deep too, but Tim, what is most important? Or I shouldn't say most, but what is important? Top two or three maybe, but in I would, life. I would say um, family and friends. Um, for me, um, that's always been uh, a big thing to like stay connected to my family wherever I am, whether I'm, you know, in the United States or in Europe or somewhere else. Um, to always never forget where I, where I came from, obviously, to like stay connected to my friends back home. I still have uh, people that I talk to um, from my hometown will village. And um, that's that's the most important thing. Um, I, I always had a saying, um, it says, fight for love, but die for your friends. And that's kind of like um, what I live by, just to like stay close to my friends, to, to have those values, um, and appreciate it and and be positive about everything i think nice excellent great words to live by uh <laughs> so you get to ask me a question i imagine what that's going to be but if you have okay. something far away yeah um so you talked about what inspired me or like you know we always talk about what inspires athletes and i i just wanted to like know um who is someone that inspired you and you would like to sit down with that person and what would you discuss with that person? Oh man, wow, <laughs> that's uh, so. You know, on your bio and on the website, you um, talk about you say that uh, the Middle Ages are, are of interest to you. I think it maybe is partly because of your hometown it has such deep, deep roots and in, in history. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, certainly uh, Jesus would be a great. Uh, <laughs> A great conversation um, yeah. to to be in that time and and um, and understand how a person becomes that um, that character. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's one thing in the in the age we live that you have challenges and um, struggles. But there are so many distractions and so many comforts and things. In those times, and, uh, it was it was not that way. There was really yeah. no escape um, from that struggle. And so, to hear what inspires um, that kind of character would be um, amazing. And uh, so that, I think about that a lot. How does how does a person like Jesus? uh manage um and so uh yeah that's I, i'd say that and um more recently i mean athletic figures really inspire me I, you inspire me you're a guy that um you, you know you impress me and i'm uh just so grateful to get to talk to you and uh looking forward to seeing you around campus i'm disappointed i won't see you on the pitch next fall i was gonna say yeah. that but um but I want to thank you for your time and uh, again for all your kindness to my family and uh, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you more. Same, Terry. I, I appreciate your words and uh, yeah, tell your family I said hi um, and you'll be, you'll be seeing around me on campus for a little and yeah, can't wait awesome. to talk to you again soon. Thanks thank for you your time Tim. and thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thanks. All right.